Uh, introducing our speaker today uh, is our guru, Neil Solovitsky, a PSA specialist at Guru Solutions. Uh, he's been working on this topic for over 18 years and is our subject matter expert on the topic of, uh, of open air and professional services automation. Uh, without further ado, I'm gonna pass it to Neil to uh, get this rolling. Thank you, Jonathan. So for today's agenda, we will be covering the following areas. We'll first be looking at what the definition of professional services automation is. Following that, I'm gonna talk about ERP and PSA and how those two disciplines are merging. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about the history of ERP and PSA and how we've come to this point uh, in, the, in the market. We'll also be looking at some of the unique offerings NetSuite offers to services organizations in terms of ERP systems and PSA systems. Then I'm gonna go through a quick demo showing you NetSuite ERP specifically for services organizations. So we're gonna be touching on professional services automation capabilities found within NetSuite ERP itself as well uh, through its best of breed offering open air. And following the demo, we'll get into the benefits of NetSuite PSA, and then we'll have a quick wrap up with Jonathan, who will get into any questions you folks have. So feel free to submit your questions through the chat uh, via this webinar. And at the end of uh, the session today, uh, you could ask any questions you may have, and it will be our pleasure to address them uh, following the wrap up at the end of today's presentation. So what is professional services automation? So professional services automation is also known as PSA. So that's a term that's been thrown a lot over, around over the years. It's software that's designed to automate the processes of professional service organizations. So those are businesses that are selling projects to their customers, so billable projects specifically. These are project-based businesses. Their primary focus is of course, satisfying their customers by delivering services and their people are their most important important asset that you're going to see in these organizations and they come in a variety of forms so there's those those pure play professional services organizations like guru solutions that sells services to their customers there's other organizations where they'll have a professional services arm known as embedded services it tends to be an important part of the business as well and are seen as profit centers and there's also what they call internal uh, professional service organizations. So for example, a very large IT department that is selling their services to other departments within the same organization where chargebacks come into play. So as you can see, professional services is not specifically focused on a specific vertical. Uh, it really can be seen in a variety of different industries. And you'll see that anyone that is selling a service and has an, a service that requires some project management around it can benefit from a PSA offering. So some of the functionality when looking at professional services automation is around project management, how you can plan and schedule your projects effectively, how you can best manage your people, their skill sets, making sure they're working on the most profitable projects, the capturing of actuals. So that tends to be a big challenge with a lot of organization, having the ability to capture uh, the time that, that uh, their resources are working on various projects, the expenses, and baselining that against the revenue that they're generating from those projects. And that really uh, focuses on the project financials piece. So that's a, an important piece that you'll see with, with enterprise PSA offerings is the ability to really look at profitability, p and as they call it, as well as revenue recognition, and having all that information effectively come in from the CRM system and then flow back to your back office system uh, for reconciliation and for tracking of revenue and cost. So PSA does come in a variety of different flavors. They have, there are integrated offerings that really provide you an end-to-end -end solution from a lead right down to cash. And there are those that are more focused on providing you with that, what I call middle office capabilities, which is that gap between your, your back office system and your front office system and, ta and really delivering that best of breed project management capabilities and project financial capabilities, tying all those systems together so you can have an integrated offering to run your business from end to end. Okay. So let's get a little bit into the history of professional services automation. In order to do so, it, 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 it's worthwhile dialing back a couple years before PSA even existed and really look at the golden years of ERP where 
a lot of those major implementations focused specifically in the manufacturing world happened with MRP and MRP2. These were large multi-year implementations. And what this uh, time really allowed was the standardization of automating business processes and the popularity around that. Now, of course, as a lot of these implementations were happening, a lot of the ERP vendors were seeing the opportunity in order to extend their capabilities beyond manufacturing. And of course, that's where the services space came into place and PSA started to, to rise as well. So, you know, late 90s, I mean, the mid 1990s, the PSA world did emerge as a space to really fill that gap, which a lot of organizations weren't able to address with just an accounting system or a CRM system if they had a project-based uh, organization and they had services, processes that needed to be addressed. And that's where that whole best of breed world came about and open air, which is now part of the NetSuite world, uh, were one of the pioneers in, the, in that area. And it really allowed organizations tie their back office with their front office system and deliver a, a really seamless offering to those service organizations so they could deliver better to their customers. Early 2000s rolled around and popularity of ERP2, meaning web-based ERP systems and collaboration. Of course, services organizations became a lot more interesting to address as well. That was their major requirement, was really to provide better collaboration and web-based capabilities so that someone in the field or someone on a customer on a customer site could easily access, for example, their timesheet or expense reporting and have an easy way to capture all that data and better track their projects and bill out to their customers. At that time, of course, a lot of the major uh, software vendors, enterprise software vendors at the time, saw an opportunity to really jump into the PSA space. And that's where a lot of consolidation uh, started to occur uh, with uh, the acquisition by CA, by CompuWare, by NetSuite, for example, who, are, who acquired OpenAir and later becoming part of Oracle. By the 2010, the last 10 years or so, as everyone knows, the cloud has become the norm, has become the de facto kind of technology to move forward with. And with that in mind, a lot of these systems, which were point solutions like PSA, CRM, ERP, PLM, uh, were now standardized on a single cloud technology. And customers' expectations start to change at that time, uh, where the focus really shifted from being product-centric to solution centric. So they were looking for enterprise solutions to solve their business need, not so worried about the monikers themselves, whether it's an ERP system or a PSA system or a CRM system, but a solution set built on the cloud to really automate the entire process. And what we've seen in the last number of years is really the merging of those two worlds, the merging, especially in the services space between PSA and ERP. Organizations are no longer looking for strictly isolated solutions to work with each other, but more and more are looking for solutions to work as one integrated offering and having the flexibility of when they could roll in those various capabilities as needed. So traditionally, this is what a professional service automation model looked like. So go look at the history of the last 20 years of professional services automation solutions. They tend to lead with best of breed offerings and open air NetSuite, Oracle NetSuite solution still provides that model for organizations that are interested in that. But really they are seen as standalone solutions that can be rolled out specifically for PSA functionality and optionally feed their front office systems or their back office systems or both depending on the maturity of that organization. So this is something that still exists, exists today and a good enterprise PSA offering must have a strong integration platform because again it sits between these systems and the idea behind a good PSA offering is to have the data flow between your CRM, your ERP and your PSA and have the ability to report across all those elements without much uh, room for error. So good solutions will have that. And every solution uh, is a little bit better in terms of where their focus is. And if you look at open air, for example, and we'll get into that through the demonstration itself, uh, we'll, we'll jump into some of those capabilities specifically around project financials 
and how we will feed, for example, the ERP system. So this is what the new PSA model is looking like. In the last number of years, speaking to a lot of customers, we're noting that really there is no separation between project management capabilities and what you're doing from an operational point of view or a sales point of view within your organization. They're looking for a single solution to provide you with those capabilities. And of course, they want flexibility around that. So it's a different model. As opposed to having like three distinct systems, like a CRM, an ERP, or slash accounting system, and a PSA solution, now they're looking for a single solution that can be developed uh, through a building blocks approach. What that means is you could start off with your back office system, which is your which is really the core to your organization running, you know, your accounting, your receivables, your payables, your GL, that core piece essential to your business. And as needed, you could roll in other functionality if you're a services organization like CRM uh, and of course your professional service automation pieces, which is all the project management and people management components to running your company successfully. So right now, there really is a merging of the two solutions as opposed to having a product-centric product approach, putting labels on these various areas of applications. Now we're seeing more of a solution-centric solution approach showing uh, the ability to really mix and match those components and delivering a solution that makes sense for your services organization. And you're going to see when we get into demonstration of what NetSuite uh, PSA has to offer, it really provides you with many options around that. You don't have to start with your PSA component first. You could actually start with your foundational ERP uh, components and grow from there. Or you could do the reverse. You could start with your PSA offering uh, capabilities that are core to your business because that's what you want to address first. Have a more traditional approach and then later roll in that more integrated approach, bringing in the ERP foundational piece. So what makes NetSuite PSA different? So this is just gonna give you an idea of some of the differentiating capabilities of what NetSuite offers as part of its PSA portfolio. So number one, you can have a best of breed approach. Like I mentioned, this best of breed approach really is that traditional model that P the PSA market has been offering for the last 20 years or so. And NetSuite's open air solution is uh, leading in that category and has been leading for, for a number of decades already. The other uh, offering that NetSuite that offers that you won't see another solution is an integrated approach. So very few solutions will actually provide you with back office and CRM capability as part of your PSA offering. Most of the solutions out there, you actually are tying into those systems through an integration platform. This is not required with uh, the NetSuite PSA offering because again, NetSuite has its own ERP system and CRM system that fully integrates with its um, best of breed offering, but also offers its own extended professional service automation to right within the ERP platform. So there is capabilities around there as well. And finally, there's a hybrid approach. Let's say you want to have a best of breed as well as a uh, ERP system all under one single umbrella. That's a possibility as well. So again, NetSuite PSA is very unique in the marketplace offering these three options, best of breed, integrated, and hybrid approaches. You will see some vendors out there that may have a, uh, an integrated approach or a hybrid approach on the CRM side, which is quite common in the professional services automation, automation space, but those that build their PSA offering as a hybrid approach on an ERP platform is rare. So that's something unique. And what's interesting about that, it focuses more on the whole project financials component. And that was what really makes NetSuite PSA a very strong candidate for anyone looking for a PSA solution. If project financials is core to what you need to address in your uh, strategy in, in deploying a PSA solution, hands down, NetSuite PSA has the best offering in the marketplace. So that was a brief overview of what I wanted to touch on in terms of what professional service automation is, a little bit of about the history around that, and of course, 
of the NetSuite PSA benefit. So now let's jump into the demonstration where I'm going to provide you with a quick walkthrough of some of the capabilities that you can take advantage of if you move forward with NetSuite professional service automation. For today's demonstration, we're going to look at NetSuite's three offerings for professional services automation. We'll be looking at the best of breed offering offered up by OpenAir. Then we'll be looking at NetSuite ERP's SRP offering, which is an extension of the financial first ERP uh, capabilities provided by NetSuite. And finally, we'll show how, how both of these worlds can come together uh, with a hybrid model where you could have the best of breed open air solution exposed directly within the NetSuite ERP platform. So to get started, let's take a look at open air. And in this particular instance of open air, you could see there's a number of dashboards that are set up. What's important to point out is that the entire system is all role based. So depending on whether you're a finance, someone in finance or a project manager or a team member, you could have different dashboards set up. And like all the NetSuite Oracle capabilities provided by all their systems, you can easily define what these dashboards are gonna look like, or you can have an administrator control those dashboards for the end user. So in this particular case, uh, we're gonna click on the financial overview dashboard to provide you some visibility of what it would look like if you're an executive and you wanna have a little bit of visibility on your project. So here you can see, you could get a quick overview of your margins, uh, look at some forecasting, and have an idea of what's happening in terms of project burn. Of course, if you're more involved on the project side of the, of the business, there's a project overview uh, where you can come in and get a, get a good snapshot of what's happening with your projects in terms of status, red, yellow, and green traffic light indicators in terms of where you stand with your various projects and your pipeline of projects, plan versus actuals, important information you're, you're going to want to see part of the PMO or someone running projects themselves as a project manager. Resource management, always a key component within any professional services automation tool. So here uh, I'm gonna go under the staffing overview dashboard and this is a great place to give you some visibility in terms of what you can see from a reporting point of view on utilization, on forecasts, on uh, where you stand on a weekly basis or monthly basis. Again, this is all definable and as you can see, there are a number of different options from a dashboarding and reporting point of view in terms of the format of the information, whether it's a line chart, bar chart, pie chart, or uh, textual types of representation of the data. What's key here is that these dashboards are all permission-based. Depending on your role, you're gonna have access to different dashboards and they're configurable and definable based on how you set up the system. Of course, open air is also a very strong tool when it comes to managing your resources, to managing your projects, and you're gonna see that it is enterprise grade in terms of how the information is structured within the platform itself. So if we go to a project list view, what, first thing I wanna point out, you'll note on top, there are various statuses that are defined on top. This is 100% configurable. So the idea is to look at your business process and have it mapped to the PSA system. OpenAir has been in the marketplace for over 20 years. So it has taken a lot of effort and time to ensure that this solution can work with any CRM or ERP system and even works better with, of course, the Oracle NetSuite uh, platform itself. And what's important, it can mirror any kind of business process you have and you could define whether you wanna bring only firm projects within the platform or have a forecast of pre-sales or negotiated projects that come in so you can start forecasting with, on your resources uh, forecasting around cost, around billing, right within the platform itself. What's also nice about the uh, tool in terms of uh, how the information is displayed from a project point of view is that depending on what state you're in, you can actually define what columns are being exposed. So now I'm in pre-sales, I see a limited amount of information that's exposed on the screen, it, screen itself. But if I go, for example, in the in progress state, you can see there's a lot more information that's being exposed. And this is something based on your role that you could define in the system, easily go in and customize the columns and the fields that are being exposed here based on the state that project's in. Good thing to point out here is the concept of templates. So this is something that's heavily leveraged by open air customers. You can go in and create different templates for different projects uh, that you're uh, generating on a regular basis. So again, the idea is to reuse this information. You don't have to keep on reinventing the wheel each and every single time there's a new project and you can have different projects set up for different processes 
Some organizations are even basing them on different billing types. So when it's a TNM project versus a fixed fee project versus a mixed project, that could all be defined in the system and it will capture all the metadata, all the scheduling, all the billing details, all the budgetary information relevant to that template. And all you need to do is create a project from template and it will automatically generate the project details. So now let's dig into a specific project to give you a little bit more uh, visibility on what you're gonna see within the project itself. So when I open up project here, we're gonna go into our PLM deployment project. You're gonna notice there's a number of elements on the top. One of the first areas that I like to always show is the properties area, because this is the metadata that's captured around the projects for, for reporting purposes, this is key. Gives you some good high level information on what's happening with the pr project and how the project is being set up. And you can even have, for example, custom fields here if there's specific kind of elements that you need to report on. Other area I wanna point out is this NetSuite integration section. So this is showing you that if you already have NetSuite ERP, you can easily integrate it to the system as well. Within every project, there's the ability to have tasks and take a look at those tasks. So again, you could take a look at tasks at a high level, create your entire work breakdown structure, assign work directly within the system. If you want something a little bit more involved, like a Gantt chart, you have the ability to set that up in the system, create your dependencies, uh, track baseline, critical path. It has all the important planning and scheduling capabilities that you would expect to see within a powerful project management tool. Number of things to point out around the uh, financial side, some very strong reporting that you get within the system itself or set up within the system itself. Uh, one of the reports I, uh, I like to point out is this report directly in the system. It's a status summary report and it allows you to have a configurable report that you can set up on your own to expose certain details and this could change from project to project. Gives you some very high level information on what's happening with the project, status of that project, quick links, where you stand in terms of phases and you could even include information such as risk and have traffic light indicators around those risks. Why I like this report is because this is something they could easily print and share with your team on a regular basis, but you could also have it customer facing and filter out some of this information. So in this case, let's say you didn't want to expose any specific financials or sensitive information that could be filtered out and, and shared with your customer. Resource management, that's also a, a key piece. So there is the ability to have more tactical resource management right within the plan itself or have something a little bit more strategic with various options around looking at your centralized resource pool. In this case, we're looking at what we call a resource planner where you're gonna go in, you're gonna see a list of both generic resources and actual resources and see where they stand in terms of utilization. And you can see how it's all color coded. So this is something that could be defined in the system. What's nice about this view is you can look at different groupings that are relevant. For example, here, I'm looking at just the project managers and where they stand. But if I wanted to look at, for example, all, only soft bookings or maybe a specific project like the McGuire Systems PLM deployment project, I can easily go in and look at that specifically. So from an end user's point of view, it's important to have a very usable system so they can easily update and put actuals against the system around expenses, around cost, around purchase orders, around time. And here you can see I'm logged in as a specific user and I could go in and easily enter my time. As you can see here, you have the ability to capture both project work across multiple projects, as well as non-project work like vacation and sick leave. But that's all possible within the system itself. Expenses, same thing. So you can easily create expenses if need be as an end user and submit your expenses against project. The advantage of having expenses within the PSA platform, of course, it will allow you to easily pull that into your invoices uh, if you need to build them off out to your customers. From a billing point of view, of course, it's important to have the ability to easily capture all this information and generate invoices. So here's an example of an invoice that captured all the billing details of a specific project and you can configure what the invoice form looks like. It's not uncommon to have Many of our customers use the ERP system where the final invoice gets pushed out. Of course, if this is working with NetSuite ERP, it can easily flow to the NetSuite ERP system if need be. Finally, from a reporting point of view, you do have the ability to have 
hundreds of reports available out of the box that you could take advantage of and configure. So here's just an example of a quick report of a billing margin report with a heat map, red, yellow, green, saying where you stand in terms of your projects, of your margins for various uh, job codes and projects and classes. Great, so let's go in and show you a little bit of what NetSuite offers in terms of PSA capabilities right within the ERP platform itself. So what I'm gonna do is log in to NetSuite ERP. And I'm logged in as a project manager. And what you'll see here is a lot of the PSA functionality, but right within the ERP platform. So this is the same platform that the finance team, the accounting team, the executives would use for, from an operational point of view, but you could also use it for a project management and professional service automation perspective as well. So capturing your time and expenses, looking at reports, looking at your projects and resources, creating resources here, having a Gantt view of your schedules, having a resource allocation view, utilization view. And I could simply click into any of these particular projects. So if I click this particular tower installation project, just to give you a sense of what it looks like within the ERP platform, there's a full project record that you could create within the project. You could define all your tasks. You could define your resources, do resource allocation, all within the ERP platforms. For organizations that are more focused on having a financial and accounting and ERP system and have an extension of that PSA capability right within uh, the ERP platform, NetSuite does offer that and is very good in offering that capability. So just to show you, this, these are the project management and professional service automation capabilities like, uh, within the ERP system, but you still have access to all the financial information. So here, if I go in, you could see under the financial overview page, I still have access to all the typical financial and accounting information you would have in an ERP system, your AR uh, information around receivables, around uh, bills, your POs, all within the same platform. And finally, let me show you how these two worlds could come together with the hybrid model that allows NetSuite ERP to embed the best of breed open air solution directly in the system. So here you can see I'm logged in to NetSuite ERP in a typical dashboard. And right within this dashboard, you have the ability to incorporate what we call portlets. Portlets are different windows within the dashboard. In this specific case, I've included an open air portlet. So this is the actual dashboard that you would see directly in open air. Now it's exposed within the NetSuite ERP platform. So what this allows you to have is the best of both worlds. You have your entire ERP system, your financial system, and a best of breed system with those data points embedded right within the ERP solution itself. Further than that, you could actually uh, define a menu option that provides you with the features and functions that you would typically find within OpenAir. And you can easily look at your project list, gain access to the information around your projects, look at invoices, have the exchange of data between your billing, details, your costing details, revenue recognition, all within the same solution. So that concludes my uh, presentation for today. Uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, talk a little bit about some of the key takeaways you can learn from today's presentation. These are focused on the professional services industry, PSA, and NetSuite PSA within this context. So from the professional services industry, it's important to point out that although it's typically seen as a vertical within the world of many other verticals, I see the professional services industry more horizontal in nature. In fact, that's the tendency in terms of where it's going. Although there are still a lot of pure play professional services companies out there, there are many embedded professional services arms within other organizations, whether they're manufacturing, financial services, or healthcare, as well as any organization that has a large internal services department that, that runs as a services organization do face the same challenges that a traditional uh, pure play professional services company faces. In terms of NetSuite itself, one in three NetSuite customers are in the professional services space. So what this means is that when it comes to expertise and when it comes to functionality, uh, you're not gonna have a more versatile and more robust partner as NetSuite to deliver that capability to your professional services organization. 
Also a nice thing about NetSuite PSA is the versatility in terms of its options it offers in terms of professional services automation. So it's a lot more than traditional PSA. I like to call it ERP for services because you do have an ERP platform that can extend and provide PSA capabilities. You have the ability to take a best of breed and have it under the same umbrella with a hybrid model right uh, within uh, the ERP system, or you could have a standalone best of breed offering as well. So you have both, you have uh, best of breed integrated and hybrid options, which are unique to the marketplace as well. Any organization that has a mature process in place is looking for deep functionality, especially around project financials, you're gonna get the best bang for your buck with NetSuite PSA, especially when it needs to communicate and exchange data with your CRM system and your ERP system. And if you have NetSuite ERP and CRM, that's even an added value there. So really the sweet spot shopper for the solution is a mature professional services organization that has a robust practice and is looking for strong project financial requirements along with the capabilities of effectively managing resources and planning and managing your projects as well. So with that in mind, uh, that concludes uh, my presentation or my piece of the presentation today. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass it on to Jonathan, who's gonna go through the Q&A portion of today's session. He's gonna look at what questions were uh, provided through the chat and we're gonna take it from there and he's gonna give us a quick wrap up on who Gurus is and our methodology. Back to you, Jonathan. Hey, thanks so much, Neil, for that presentation on open air and professional services automation. Touched on a lot of great points uh, in uh, growing organizations and some challenges that open air can help uh, address. So thanks very much for that. I uh, wanted to address as well, I noticed in the chat or in the Q&A, uh, some of you have noticed that uh, some of the screens were blurry during today's demo. Uh, so what that seems to be is I think it's the bandwidth on Zoom caused it to be uh, blurry at certain points. So what we will do is we will send you a high definition video recording uh, after this. Uh, so if you register to the email that you registered with, we'll make sure that you have a crystal clear recording uh, so you can go back and see those screens properly. So wanted to apologize for that. A little bit about uh, Guru Solutions. We've been working in the ERP space for 15 years, uh, helping companies implement uh, their back office solutions, including NetSuite ERP, SRP, and open air offerings. Uh, have over 80 certified consultants uh, and have completed over 2,100 projects over the years. So definitely have an experienced group here ready to answer your questions uh, about PSA, about projects and accounting and ERP. Uh, got a couple of great ones in the chat, but I do uh, encourage you to, uh, to ask those questions. I'll uh, read the first one that came in. Uh, from one of our attendees here. Uh, so it says, uh, if we have our own in-house CRM, what options does NetSuite have to integrate PSA with our solution? Also, if we already have a NetSuite ERP, when does it make sense to extend our PSA capabilities within our current NetSuite system versus exploring a system like OpenAir? Uh, so I will uh, pass this one over to Neil. Thanks so much, Jonathan. That's a great question. So if you have an in-house CRM system uh, and you want to integrate with NetSuite PSA, the beautiful thing about NetSuite is that they're already, uh, those systems are already designed to integrate with third-party systems. Not only that, uh, whether you're using OpenAir or NetSuite SRP, they already have out-of-the-box connectors that are pre-built where you can easily exchange data. Um, they use services such as Celigo and Del Boomi as integration platforms. If you need something a little bit more custom, uh, that's a possibility as well. well uh, in fact, Gurus has the expertise around these integration platforms and we have the capability to really have any kind of two-way integration, real-time or batch type of integration with, with these systems. So this is something that's common within the PSA industry. And this is something that can be uh, delivered quite easily uh, through the NetSuite uh, platform. Yes, the second part of the question was around the extension of ERP um, and, and whether um, it makes sense to extend your capabilities within NetSuite or uh, explore the open air. 
uh, option. Again, a lot of this depends on the maturity of your organization and your current architect architectural strategy. So organizations that have, a ba that have basic PSA requirements already have NetSuite ERP in place. It may make sense to just extend that capability right within the platform. Uh, where you see um, the difference or the move to more of a best of breed offering really comes down to the deepening and functionality your organization uh, demands, especially around uh, resource management, looking at utilization. If you're doing some very deep skill matching, uh, you need some very robust timesheet expense tracking, uh, billing requirements. At that point, it may make sense to look at a best of breed option like Open Air. Again, the nice thing about uh, 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 Open Air's solution is that it already is fully integrated with uh, the NetSuite back office system, and it's all on the same platform. Uh, so it provides you that capability. In addition to that, what's nice is there's also the ability to have that seamless transition. So even if you go with, let's say, downgraded PSA functionality with an extension within the ERP platform and you need to move to the open air platform, it's all uh, could happen right within uh, the same organization. And it's, it's not very difficult to uh, deliver that capability because again, it's one platform that you're dealing with. Any other questions? Great, thanks, Neil. Uh, next question uh, comes as well from our audience uh, for an IT department that delivers services to our own internal customers. Is NetSuite PSA suited to help manage service delivery projects? Great question. So I do get this question a lot. Uh, so a lot of uh, internal IT departments essentially run like professional services groups internally, and they're asking if. A PSA solution is the right solution, or maybe they need to look at a project portfolio management solution, which is designed to manage internal projects typically for IT. It really depends on, again, around the financials that need to be tracked within that IT group. Um, typically, if an IT organization is tracking information such as chargebacks and they're treated as a, a profit center or a cost center, PSA tends to be a better fit. Uh, if they're just looking to track projects at a portfolio level and the budgets around that, sometimes it's better to kind of stick to a traditional PPM offering. Um, again, we see IT organizations, especially significant, significant ones, larger in size with larger IT budgets are treated a lot like a professional services arm and they treat their internal customers the same way that a professional services group would treat, treat the external customers. And, and in those cases, like I said, I think PSA would be a better offering. Okay. Great answer. Thanks, Neil. Uh, next question. In the current economy, what are the KPIs that you recommend a firm pivot their focus upon? That comes from Ron Meechling. So in the current economy, say that again? I didn't catch. Uh, in, in the current economy, what are the KPIs that you recommend a firm pivot their focus upon? So in today's current economy, um, professional services uh, organizations, typically they should definitely look at uh, some of the requirements that uh, organizations are looking around in terms of uh, finding efficient ways to deliver services to their, to, to their customer base. And that really comes down to having uh, the right solution set uh, that's delivered in the cloud. So that, that, that's what we're seeing, especially with today's uh, current economy that people working remotely and um, having the ability to deliver services effectively in a remote fashion requires uh, companies to have a better look at uh, what their customers are doing to address that issue. So again, uh, those are the types of KPIs you should be looking at, really looking at the KPIs on how you could deliver remotely. Uh, and we're seeing that cloud solutions is the direction you're going, especially if you could see, you know, today we're using Zoom. Zoom has become like the new norm in terms of the, the video technology platform delivered over the cloud. Uh, again, those are the types of things you need to be looking at. Focus primarily on remote uh, delivery of services and the KPIs around that. Great question, Ron. Uh, very current uh, towards uh, what we are, uh, what we're dealing with today. Uh, yes, the second part here, uh, 
think we we started we started answering it before you uh, you finished typing it. So, uh, are you considering additional details for resources and customer locations to assist with resource allocation methods? Example: uh, New York City is not open for business, but Atlanta is open. Uh, how do you recommend setting up a system or process to triangulate the best or safe methods of assigning resources? Yeah, the, the great thing about cloud solution is when it comes to assigning resources, they're already designed to work with remote teams. So regardless whether you're in Georgia or if you're in the other part of the country in California, uh, the system is already set up to deal with um, various resource groups across these various regions. And it's not only um, regions locally, or, or, or within a specific country, but across the world. So that's the beauty of PSA, especially cloud-based PSA. It allows you to have that capability to easily have a centralized resource pool, segment them according to each uh, geographical region, and then effectively seeing uh, how those resources are being allocated and looking at the capacity and utilization of those resources. Great answer, Neil. Uh, if you have any questions about gurus, about ERP, about open air, about SRP, you can email us at info at gurussolutions.com. Uh, my name is Jonathan Nakoka. Neil Solovitsky just gave this uh, presentation today, uh, but we'd all be happy to, uh, to hear from you, hear what you think of this presentation and address some of your questions. Excellent. Hope everyone has a great day as well.